Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Amanda Sarr's Celebrity Perfume Review. So today, I'm extremely happy to be bringing you guys my review of Chow by Vince Camuto. So this perfume launched, I believe technically this year, 2017. Might have launched at the end of 2016, I don't really remember. Um, but it is the sixth edition in the kind of what I call the Vince Camuto namesake series. Um, all very similar bottles, very similar designs. Um, box looks like this, and it says, Ciao, Vince Camuto. And it's got this floral in the heart with this kind of embossed, uh, Vince Camuto logo. 3.4 ounce Eau de Parfum Spray Vaporizer. Um, this flower does kind of ca cascade itself onto the top, where the top it just says, Ciao, Vince Camuto. The back doesn't really have a whole lot going on. You've got the, uh, Vince Camuto website, but it does have a high gloss. Oh, let's see if my camera will pick up the light. Maybe, maybe not. Right there. There is an outline of the bottle. Um, both sides of the boxes are completely clear, and then it's got information on the bottom. The bottle looks like this this time, and it's actually one of my favorite uh, Jimmy Choo bottles. Um, it says Chow, Vince Camuto, in a hot pink. Uh, like the be bevels of the uh, bottle are hot pink, which makes it really, really pretty. You got a hot pink bow, and then kind of this rosy gold top. So, I was actually really, really excited for this fragrance when it first came out and do really enjoy it. Um, it took me a little bit to get it. I finally purchased it. Alta had a discount a while back um, where they gave you like an extra discount off. I think it was like 20% on fragrances, plus I had some rewards. So I got a really, really good deal on this fragrance. Um, so top notes of this fragrance are Italian Mandarin, Pink Grapefruit, and Wild Strawberry, or Wild Strawberry and Blackberry. Middle notes are Rose, Peony, Lily of the Valley, and Passion Flower, um, Pink Jasmine, and Honeysuckle, with base notes of Amber, Cashmere, and um, Amaretto Liqueur, Sandalwood, and Indonesian Patchouli. There's a lot of notes in this fragrance. If I count correctly, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 registered notes in this fragrance, which is ridiculous compared to like Jimmy Choo Low, but I just reviewed, has six. So, the one thing I will say about Jimmy Choo or uh, Vince Camuto fragrances, they do actually have a lot going on to them. Um, I do have all six in this series. I don't have them. Um, I sh should get that at some point, but I haven't yet. Um, but I really do like this one. But at the same time, it's not hands down my favorite one. Um, but I do like it. It's on top. It's on the upper side of the Vince Camino fragrances for me. So when you first spray it, you get the strawberry and a little bit of that blackberry. Um, the the mandarin is a little bit there, but it doesn't give a super orangey um, opening. And I feel like the pink grapefruit comes out a little bit more as that blackberry and strawberry tend to dry down. But definitely the standout fruit of that top would probably be the strawberry, in my opinion. You get a little bit there. It's not a synthetic strawberry, which I do like. It is kind of a juicy, ripe red strawberry note that you're getting. Um, but as it starts to dry down a little bit more, and when you get into that heart, this fragrance does become a little bit floral. Um, there's a lot of florals in this heart. Um, pull my notes back up because I don't want to screw this up. The rose... Gives it kind of a powdery along with the peony. They both kind of give it a soft, powdery heart. The Lily Valley and the Passion Flower are both there, and I feel like the Passion Flower kind of is enough there that makes the peony and the rose together not make this fragrance super baby powder esque. Um, with the fruits on the top, I also feel like that helps with it a lot. But sometimes um, when you mix rose and peony together, you can get overly powdery or grandma type perfumes. Uh, and they're just because they're both very kind of superstar floral notes. Um, I get a little bit of the honeysuckle and the jasmine, but I definitely, like I said, the passion flower is kind of that standout uh, floral of the fragrance. Um, and it kind of rands, helps round out the other notes to make them not as powerful as they normally would be. Um, as we dry down, the cashmere is definitely a note that you can smell. Amber adds the warmth to this fragrance. Amaretto liqueur also kind of adds a little bit of warmth and a little bit of sweetness to this fragrance. It isn't like candy bubblegummy sweet. Um, it is definitely more of a mature 
businesswoman sweet. Um, she kind of graduated from, you know, sweet like candy or fantasy and has moved on to her businesswoman fragrance, if you will. Not that fragrances are age range or anything appropriate, but, um, I feel like if you were to age range this, this is definitely kind of the step up from those fragrances. Um, and it was a little bit more floral. She's not quite to Chanel. She's not quite to that type of mature scent. Um, but this is her middle ground fragrance and her business time scent. Um, what's good about this fragrance is it stays warm and fruity through a lot of this fragrance. Um, and I definitely feel like that's nice because it helps make it so it's not overly floral and overly sweet. It kind of keeps a very subtle note throughout this fragrance. It almost has... If you let it really, really, really dry down, like if you were to pick up a, like if you were to spray this on a hoodie and then pick it up a couple days later, or if you smell the bottle straight off, it does almost have a little bit of a lipsticky scent to it. Um, but it isn't like over lipsticky and it's not something I really see a lot in the fragrance when I'm wearing it. I definitely say this is a spring or summertime fragrance. Um, I think it could be someone's signature scent, but I feel like this also has a little bit of an edge to it where I don't know if somebody would want to have it as their signature scent. Because I definitely feel like um, wearing it every single day is definitely a fragrance you're going to be wearing for other people as well because it is very noticeable on you. Um, people did notice me wearing this fragrance a little bit more than they normally do. So it does have a really good sillage on it, um, which I feel like sometimes signature scents shouldn't have as good of a sillage on them just because you don't want everybody smelling your perfume uh, if you're going to be just wearing it as a everyday fragrance. Um, definitely a springtime scent. I get about six to eight hours of lasting power on this fragrance, and I definitely feel like this fragrance could be layered with another fragrance. Like, you could wear it during the day and then layer it with another fragrance at night to enhance it as kind of a date night fragrance. Um, I don't feel like alone it's a date night fragrance, but I feel like it's something that could enhance on it and make it a date night fragrance. So, there you guys go. There is my review of, uh, Vince Camuto's Chow. I almost forgot what I was talking about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, Ada S. Perfume, and Instagram, Among the Stars Perfume. Links are in the description below. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Those do always help me. And um, like I said in my last video, I plan on doing a 3,000 subscriber video um, as a thank you and a giveaway. I might still do that depending on time. I may push this off to 4,000. So the faster we get to 4,000, the bigger the giveaway. So thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.